Well, welcome again to National Community Church, and I want to invite you back next week. How does that sound? A uh, number of years ago, I was hiking uh, Horse Tooth Mountain in Fort Collins, Colorado with my friend, spiritual father, uh, kind of a grandfather to National Community Church, Dick Foth, who will be here next weekend. Uh, and we had this crazy idea. You get crazy ideas around 13,000 feet. And, and we said, what if we wrote a book together? Um, and uh, we recorded conversations over a couple of years and then uh, worked on a little book. Well, uh, that book gets on bookshelves on May 6th. Uh, but before it gets on bookshelves, we got some black market copies for you. And so uh, next weekend, here's the deal. Next weekend, uh, Laura and I want to give you a free copy. Invite a friend to come with you. We're going to begin that series, A Trip Around the Sun. Can't wait. But this weekend, we wrap up. One little yes and uh, we've talked about saying yes to priorities, saying yes to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this weekend, we're going to say yes to the promises of God. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 says, no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes, yes in Christ. Uh, in a few weeks, Laura and I will celebrate our Michael Jordan anniversary, uh, number 23, uh, and we're going to go to the Bahamas. Uh, why not? We've never been, and uh, we're going to stay in all-inclusive. I don't even know exactly what that means, but I want to find out. Um, so we're going to experience an all-inclusive. I, I think 2 Corinthians 1.20, listen, thousands of promises in the Bible, but no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. It's this all-inclusive verse, and uh, that's what we're going to talk about. I want you to know that uh, when, when Christ died on the cross, he didn't just pay for your forgiveness. He paid for every single promise, and the claim ticket is the cross. And so we'll talk about it. If you have a Bible, you can turn to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, and we will get there uh, in a moment. Uh, let me frame uh, this message with a little story. A couple of weeks ago, our pastor of prayer, uh, Heidi Scanlon, uh, shared a story with our staff. She gave it, uh, me permission to share it uh, with us as a church. Um, now, I don't know anybody who prays like Heidi. In fact, uh, I think that there are thousands of answers to prayer at National Community Church because of Heidi, her leadership, and our prayer teams. In fact, can we just take a moment right now and thank our prayer teams across our campuses. Uh, so grateful for them. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, they were uh, just making this late night uh, run to get some supplies for school. Now, Murphy's Law of School Supply, they need them the next day, right? That's always how it works. And so sometimes kind of when there's a little bit of pressure like that, uh, the car ride, uh, let's just say that the barometric pressure rose a little bit. And, uh, um, you know, Heidi, Heidi says, uh, Andrew, her son, uh, Andrew has the kindest heart of any boy I know. Now, I'm going to double down on that. I've known Andrew since he was a little boy. Love that kid. Uh, but Heidi also said on the way, for whatever reason, Andrew was a little out of sorts. Now, who hasn't been, right? And so uh, let's just say that our pastor of prayer was getting frustrated. And... Uh, so she drops off her husband, John, and Andrew uh, to go ahead and get whatever they need to get. And she's going to collect herself by running into Barnes and Noble because uh, she's got to get the joy, 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 joy back down in her heart. And so uh, she goes to the Christian section and she thinks, I I'm just going to uh, check out... Um, one of Pastor Mark's books. And so uh, she finds the books and, and there's one that she doesn't recognize. It uh, has a little blue binding and, uh, and she picks it up and it's praying circles around the lives of your children, including children named Andrew. And so she opens the book and uh, she said, as I did, the page miraculously fell open to a sentence that shockingly said, my friends John and Heidi are a part of my prayer circle. 
uh, she said, how can I uh, forget being in this book? And, and so she said, I stood in Barnes and Noble with tears falling on the pages of that book as I read you recounting the promise, the promise that God had given us about Andrew when he was a little boy and experienced a son, sudden loss of speech. Now, I'm not gonna tell you the whole backstory, but it was Isaiah 59, 21, and it was a game changer for John and Heidi, that, that promise. Well, we're prone to forget the promises of God, aren't we? Even the ones that change our life. And so, uh, but God never forgets. And so, uh, I love this. He, he so gently and lovingly reminds us in such strange and mysterious ways, doesn't he? And so, uh, Heidi just said, as I reread that promise from Isaiah 59, 21, I stood there sobbing in the barns and noble. Now, here's the irony of the story. For the last decade, uh, Heidi has faithfully prayed a prayer, and I'm going to tell you what that prayer is. Uh, I think she's prayed it probably more than anybody outside our immediate family. She's prayed that my books would get into the right hands at the right time. Uh, and she said, little did I know that that would one day be me. Uh, God went to extraordinary lengths to give us that promise 12 years ago. Listen to this. And 12 years later, his promises still hunt me down when I least expect them. Now, I want to ask you a question this weekend. Uh, is there a promise that God gave you maybe 12 years ago, that you've forgotten about? Is there a promise that maybe you've put back on the shelf and forgotten it uh, to, take it, to take it back off? Is there a promise that you stopped standing on, that you've stopped praying for or asking for or believing for? Um, here, here's what I believe this weekend. The promises of God are hunting us down, but you have to say yes, you have to receive them, you have to believe them. Now, every promise is yes in Christ, and by the way, no expiration date. Um, you know what? We were in a restaurant a few weeks ago, and the whole reason we went there was because we had a gift card, and so we ate our meal afterwards, gave them the gift card. The server comes back and says, Your gift card's expired. <laughs> well, I wanted to give my food back. But that would have been difficult to do at that point. And, uh, and I thought, man, I can't believe it. Gift card expired. What a bitter uh, disappointment. Listen, promises of God do not expire. Never expire. I want you to know that God wants to renew the promise in your life this weekend. Um, listen, God didn't withdraw the promise. Maybe we withdrew our faith. So let's keep believing. With that, let's jump in. Hebrews chapter six and verse number 10. We're gonna take it verse by verse. Uh, here we go. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. I, I think the key little phrase, will not will not forget. Now, let me tell you what God will forget. This is so good. Uh, God will forget your sin. Listen, uh, the moment you confess your sin, God doesn't just forgive, he forgets. How amazing is that? And there's no double jeopardy. Listen, here's the, here's the crazy thing. When you confess um, a sin a second time, all you're doing is reminding God of something he forgot the first time. Okay, so forgiven and forgotten. Uh, Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I think the word no, now is the one that, that we kind of uh, forget about. You know, the word no is significant. N you know, everything is forgiven. But the word now, it's not a future tense thing. It's a present tense reality. Uh, you are forgiven right here, right now. So here's the bottom line. God forgets everything you've done wrong. Oh, and then he remembers everything you've done right. That's our God. That's who he is. Um, now, 
Uh, let me tell you a little story. Um, you know, in Acts 10, there, there's a story about Cornelius. Uh, uh, he's a captain in the Italian regiment. It says he and his family were devout and God-fearing. Uh, I love this little descriptor. It says he gave generously to those who were in need, prayed regularly. And then one day, uh, an angel shows up, has a vision from God. And uh, in verse four, uh, the angel says this. Are you ready for this? Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering, a memorial offering to God. Now, why do you build a memorial? Well, so that you don't forget. We live in a city of memorials, right? Memorials all over the place. Do you, do you know that every gift you give, every prayer that you pray, you know what you're doing? You're building a memorial to God. Isn't that a beautiful thing? And God doesn't forget. Now, the crazy thing is you might forget, but God does not. No gift is forgotten. No prayer goes unanswered. Now, it's not always gonna be the answer you want, right? But can I just share something that the Lord impressed so deeply on my heart and some of you need to take this to heart. God's no is as gracious as God's yes. You know, we don't always get the answer we want, but it's because God has something better for us. Now, I have a friend uh, who told me a story a couple of months ago. Uh, he's on staff at really a remarkable church, a church that I have so much respect for. The senior pastor has served that church uh, for four decades. That's a long time. And uh, so one day, uh, not unlike the one day in Acts 10, he's reading Acts 10. In fact, he's reading this very verse that I read to you uh, about Cornelius. And he gets to this verse, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. And, and he heard that still small voice of the Holy Spirit. And he felt like God said to him, I'm gonna reward you. I'm about to reward you for your faithfulness. Listen, a couple weeks later, a miracle materializes out of thin air, out of thin air, out of nowhere. A developer uh, approaches him and says, we wanna buy the air rights, the thin air rights for a hundred million dollars. Dollars. Now, come on, that would make you shout, wouldn't it? Um, a hundred million dollar miracle out of thin air. And God rewards. I, I want to tell you what I believe. I believe Jeremiah 1 12, that he's watching over his word to perform it. I believe it. I believe Deuteronomy 28 2, that his blessings will overtake us. If we stay obedient, his blessings are going to overtake us. I believe Galatians 6, 9, at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. And I believe Philippians 4, 19, he will supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. I believe it. Now this week, I got a little package in the mail. And, uh, you know, I get a lot of letters from, uh, from people in prison uh, who have read a book, but, but this one was a little different. There were 17 letters uh, from 17 inmates at Southern Correctional Institution, and they had taken the 40-day prayer challenge. And so they went through it together, and I, I just was so touched that they would take the time, uh, each one of them, to share with me what God did in their lives. Well, one of the women, and she, she identified herself as inmate number 0828629. Um, shared a little answer uh, to prayer. Um, and it was the simplicity of it that really impacted me. Um, she said she doesn't have some of the basic uh, toiletries like soap and shampoo, and she just doesn't like to ask people. And so she said, I'm gonna circle that in prayer. And, and one day she, she goes off to a class that they were offering in prison. And when she comes back uh, on her bed in her prison cell is everything that she prayed for. Uh, she said there was um, soap and shampoo and makeup. And, and, and then there was something that she didn't ask for, laundry detergent. And, and um, she put an exclamation point after it like she had just won 
the lottery. Can I just say that God is great not just because nothing is too big. God is great because nothing is too small. Listen, sometimes he shows us in the most intimate, in the smallest of ways, how precious we are to him. And I, I think that's what he was doing. And, and so she just wrote this little, so I got uh, what I need and an extra item. Come on. Uh, and then later that week, I was sitting with T.L. Rogers. You'll hear him during the Trip Around the Sun series. Um, and he shared something with me that he'd been at a conference the weekend before. And he said something that I don't know why. It just, it just really made sense to me. He said, your father in heaven likes to give you things you don't need. Now, well, well I thought the promise was he'll supply all of my uh, need according to his riches and glory. Yeah, but um, come on, parents, uh, for, for your kid's birthday, um, do you get them toothpaste, toothpaste, um, <laughs> underwear? Do we, underwear? Um, no, 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 because if you get what they need, um, like it's almost like an anti-gift, right? Like, <laughs> thank you for supplying my need right now, but really what I wanted was what I wanted. Um, parents, don't you love it? Don't you wanna get what your kids Want. Now listen, the Heavenly Father will not spoil you. He won't. But if you steward the blessings, he will bless your socks off. That's who he is. Listen, no good thing will God withhold from those who walk up rightly before him. Another one of the promises that I stand on, uh, Psalm chapter 84, verse number 11. That's the heart of our Heavenly Father. I wanna tell you that to believe God for Anything less than what he promised isn't humility, it's a lack of faith. Oh, but I don't wanna be assuming. No, 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 that's a lack of faith. If all you're believing God for is what you can pull off in your own strength or wisdom, then there's no faith in the equation. Well, on that subject, why don't we go ahead and go to the next verse. Verse number 12. But to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Um, kind of skipped over chapter 11 or verse 11 there, but verse number 12, um, through faith and patience. This is where I want to camp for just a couple of minutes. Listen, uh, there are two keys to the promises of God. One is faith and the other is patience. Um, uh, I think the key to every transaction in the kingdom of God is faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Um, uh, apart from faith, um, it's sin. Faith, faith is the, the three-digit code in the back of the credit card. It's the key to that transaction actually going through. Now, uh, earlier this year, uh, I was uh, in Hebrews chapter 11. And, and you ever kind of, you're in your kind of Bible reading plan, you're going through the word, but then you get to a chapter or verse and you get stuck. And that's a good thing. Um, I, I spent several weeks in Hebrews chapter 11 just kind of uh, deep diving every single one of those stories because each one is so amazing. And you, you know what I found? I found that the, the little phrase, by faith, by faith, by faith, is repeated 22 times, at least in my version of the Bible. Uh, by faith, Abraham, by faith, Abel, by faith, Noah, by faith, Moses, by faith, by faith, by faith. Faith. Now, I'm going to tell you what we wish it said. By logic, by logic, by logic. <laughs> uh, some of you want to get where you want to go by logic, but that isn't the way it works. Uh, logic will not get you where God wants you to go. There's only one way to get there, and that is by faith. By faith. There's going to come a moment where you can't be logical. You need to be theological. You need to add God to the equation. It might not even add up. It might not even make sense, but there's going to come a moment where you need to step out in faith in order to claim that promise from God. Let me share a story with you. Uh, inspire me this week. Went to lunch with our church planner in residence, Asif Sheikh, and uh, took me to, to Ravi Kebab in Arlington. If you've never been to Ravi Kebab, uh, especially our Arlington locations, you need to get up and leave right now. <laughs> 
now and uh, head over to Robbie Kebab. Actually, wait until the end of the service, but uh, you're going to want to get lunch there. Well, Asif and Leah and their daughters, McKenna and Janessa, moved to D.C. by faith, by faith, um, from Florida. Uh, and they're going to move back uh, this summer to plant a daughter church of national community church called Church by the Bay. What a cool name. Um, and so we're at Ravi Kebab, and uh, I'm there with Asif and Eric, one of our protégés, and then uh, Dan Feliciano, and Dan's going to be a part of that uh, core team. But let me, let me tell you um, uh, how he came to that decision. Well, Asif and Dan were uh, friends as kids growing up in Arlington, but it kind of lost touch, but been about a decade and, and uh, hadn't really connected um, when Asif invited Dan to lunch. Now, we'll get back to that lunch in a second. Dan and his wife, Shivali, uh, really living the dream, wonderful family, uh, successful career at the State Department, nice home. Uh, Dan served as a volunteer worship leader for the last 15 years. And, and then one night, you ever have one of these moments where, where you feel like God might have something else, something different, something better? And, and the equilibrium, there's a disturbance in the force, right? And you feel like something, something uh, might need to change. Well, Dan uh, told his wife, Shivali, uh, that he was praying that uh, someone somehow would flat out offer him a full-time worship position. Um, and Shivali uh, lovingly reminded him that that's not the way it works. Um, that typically, you know, you probably need to get your resume out there. But, but Dan and Shivali, you know, they started praying about it. Well, fast forward, uh, Asif invites Dan to lunch, Ravi Kebab, of course. And uh, he says, um, D- Dan said, uh, midway into our lunch, Asif leans across the table and flat out asked me if I'd be willing to serve as his worship pastor for the church plant in St. Pete. So that weekend, this is so cool. This is acting on, this is taking a step of faith. Dan flies down to St. Petersburg uh, to pray. And say, is this, is this the promised land? Is this where God is, is leading us? And, and, and Dan said this, I knew that saying yes to this calling would be saying no to what we had accomplished the last 15 years of our life. Okay, this is huge right here. Listen, saying yes to one thing is saying no to something else. Some of you, if you want the promise that God has for you, you might need to say no uh, to whatever it is um, that you've accomplished thus far in your life. They, They knew it would mean leaving immediate family and close friends, their home, their career. Um, But Dan said, I quickly realized that the past 15 years spent crying out to God were the same 15 years that God was preparing me and maturing me and nurturing me for the next season of my life. But it was up to me to say yes. You know what? I love it. So inspired. Uh, Dan and Shivali, um, listen, they're they're moving to St. Pete to be a part of our church plant, but they're not doing it by logic. Come on now. They're doing it by faith. I want to tell you, 22 years ago, Laura and I did not move here by logic. We did not move. But there was a moment I'm on Pennsylvania Avenue, halfway between the White House and the Capitol. I can't even explain it. But I knew that I knew that God was calling us to this city. And we did not move here by logic. We moved here by faith. By faith, believing that God had a promise for us. Some of you are living by logic. And I get that. But listen, God has something better than that. And if you want the promise that God has for you, you might. Now, I'm not telling you to go and quit your job on Monday, okay? <laughs> I, I'm, you got to pray through it. Listen, I, I'm a both hand, both hand thinker, but, but um, um, half of this equation is faith. That's how we apprehend the promises of God. Now, the second half is patience, is patience. Um, But here's the deal. I preached on patience uh, a few weeks ago during the Element series, so you all have that down, right? (laughs) So we're good with patience. Um, So I'm just gonna keep going. Verse 13, 
Uh, When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. All right, let me zero in on something right here. Who is the promise given to? It says to Abraham, to Abraham. Uh, In other words, I think it would be fair to say that the promise had Abraham's name on it. Are you tracking with me? Um, Now let me ask another question. Who are you? Well, I'll tell you who you are. I'll use a little song to tell you who you are. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord right foot. Um, (laughs) You are a child of Abraham because of what Jesus Christ has done for you. In other words, no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ, and they have your name, your name on them. Come on, the promises. And you know what? They don't just belong to us once. They belong to us twice. Once by birthright as the children of God and twice by inheritance. Listen, Jesus paid for them two times. They're paid for twice. They've already been paid for. What we need to do is claim those promises. They have your name on it. Now let me bring it down to earth. Um, This is kind of fun. On Friday, uh, Ryan and Heather Zempel, uh, who met at NCC, and then got married, and then both of them have served uh, so incredibly on our staff in different capacities. Love Ryan and Heather. Well, uh, a precious little girl named Sawyer Elizabeth Zempel uh, is the newest member of our church family. Um, how great is that? Yep. Now, I'm not going to tell you the whole backstory, but I want you to know that uh, this little girl is nothing less than an answer to prayer. And that prayer now has a really cute name. Now, I'm going to tell you one other quick little story. Many of you remember Jason and Shelly Yost, uh, who were part of our staff for many years, weren't able to have children, so they adopted. And then they got pregnant. And... Uh, Jason sent me a picture yesterday. Um, Laura and others have prayed for them for years. And uh, you know what? God answered those prayers twice, once through adoption and once through birth. Uh, That prayer, that promise now has a name, London K. Yost. Um, Now, I don't know that, that some of you here this weekend, your prayer would be exactly Your promise would be exactly what I'm talking about. Um, In some ways, it's probably hard to see those photographs if you've been praying or trying for a long time. But I want you to know that these are testimonies. These are testimonies of what God has done, what God can do in your life. I hope they renew your faith. By the way, Abraham and Sarah, it's exactly what they were praying for. Now, they had to wait 25 years, but you know what? Through faith, and patience, through faith and patience, through faith and patience, God delivered on his promise. Verse 15, and we're done. So after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. It's the fine print, it's a footnote at the end of this wonderful passage. I wanna share one last verse, one last promise. Uh, with you. It's really the second cousin to 2 Corinthians 1.20. No matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. I think Ephesians 1.3 uh, is such a beautiful promise as well. He has blessed you with every, every spiritual blessing, all inclusive, every spiritual blessing uh, in the heavenly places in Christ. But, but here's the key. It does not say he will bless you. This is not in the future tense. It's in the past tense. He says he has blessed you. Let me tell you the difference between gratitude and faith. Gratitude is giving thanks after the blessing. Faith, faith is giving thanks before the blessing. Can I just say some of us need to uh, stop praying and begin praising, begin to thank God for the promise that he's given to us. This is not some abracadabra. It's not a Jedi mind trick. Listen, it's called faith. And then it's followed up by patience. Listen, promises of God are paid in full. And so when we celebrate communion, 
Guess what? Let's not just believe him for the promise of forgiveness. Come on now. Let's believe him for every promise because every single promise was paid for at the cross. Let's pray. Father, help us. Help us, help us, help us. Respond to your word to not just be hearers of it, but doers. God, you love it. When we step out in faith and claim your promises, you, you, are, you are not a God who overpromises and underdelivers. And Lord, when we meet that little condition at the front of those promises, you're a God who delivers. Lord, I know that every single one of us, there's a promise that we need to be white knuckling, that we need to be holding on to. And I pray right now that you would give us the faith and give us the patience to believe in Jesus' name. Amen.